chapter 2, verse 20, says, But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Good morning, and welcome to Sunday morning worship with the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. It is springtime. Last week, it was said that we were to spring forward, but God is saying something to us as well. We ought to spring forward in Him and worship Him in spirit and in truth. We are Facebook Live this morning. Thank you to our Mount Zion Church family for joining in and all of our guests. You also can view all of our worship services via YouTube. Just go to the YouTube channel and subscribe to view them all. Our order of worship today is as such. We're going to worship the Lord in song, scripture, and prayer. We'll sing again and worship the Lord, and then our pastor will come. And he will share God's word with us. Get your Bibles ready. Get your hearts ready. Then we will worship also in our giving. Remember, we are more like Christ when we give. Galatians 6 and 7 says, Be not deceived. God is not mine. Whatever a man soweth, that he shall be also. Give as God has blessed you. Come by the church and bring the gifts. Or mail them to 60 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, 38106. Or you can give through our cash app. Our handle is dollar sign. M T Zion Memphis. And it's all lowercase. Again, it's dollar sign. M T Z I O N M E M P H I S. All lowercase. Again, it's free. The changes of celebrations and guidance with the Holy Spirit are here for us to do. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth.
I am uh, doing something that's a little bit different today. Sort of like what we have not done in a year. I'm just standing before you this morning to try to share uh, a bit of a notification, kind of like an announcement. I want to extend to all of our congregation as our pastor has been in constant prayer uh, and guidance by God and the Holy Spirit. And it's, he has been encouraged that we start opening of our church on April 4th. Amen. 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 I want to let everybody know that this is not or was not an easy task to do. Uh, and I would just say from my heart that I know Pastor Winston loves the congregation of God. And he does not want to do anything outside of the will of God as he guides it. I would not want my personal self to be able to make a decision and then it affects so many other people. But with God's guidance, all will be well. So with that, I want to just say uh, to our congregation and all of our guests that are viewing and watching, that on April 4th, there will be some guidelines that we're going to follow. And it's just like what you go and see if you go to the doctor or visit other places. The protocols for the COVID uh, are such, you got to wear your mask. And you have to wear them properly. Yes. Covering your nose and mouth. Just a little demonstration. And you have to wear them throughout the whole service. Also, when you enter the sanctuary, your temperature will be checked. Um, there are stations set up to do that. And your name will be taken in. Then you'll enter into our sanctuary to worship. Um, and you can just follow uh, the signs that tell you which doors to come through. Um, we will have people in place that will guide you and actually even instruct you. Also, I want to mention that every other pew will be closed for no one to sit. If you are in the same household, you are get, you're welcome to sit together. But if not, do the six, seven foot protocol from each other. It is proper to do that. This will ensure that we're following everything that we're supposed to do so no one else will be able to get sick from this COVID. Okay? Also, we want to make sure that, you know, of, of past times that you have your wrappers from your mint and stuff you put behind your pews, your communion cups and all of that. We will provide uh, trash receptacles in the back of every entrance and exit of the church. But you drop those things off in there. Don't leave them in the back of the pews. Things are different. In order for us to celebrate properly, let's release the thought of anything that may hinder us from worshiping God in spirit and in truth. There will be more to come. Next week, we'll make the same type of announcement. If there are any changes, we'll let you know. But in order to worship God with the fullness of your heart, follow these guidelines, and we will be able to gather like we are going to do it as we move into the future. It's going to be different than the past. I want to encourage you to see some of your friends and members that you haven't seen in a year. Refrain from going to hug them. Please, until things get a little bit different and a little bit better. I know that's going to be hard. Because we're a loving church and we love to, to see each other and high five and hug on each other because we love each other and we miss each other. But to do this to refrain from that until further notice. This is the message of love from the leadership here in our pastor. Please get here too. We're going to move forward with scripture and prayer. Condition your hearts to continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us prepare our hearts, our minds, and our bodies for our devotion. 
Our devotional scripture will be taken from the 27th chapter of Proverbs, verses 1 through 10. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise you, and not thine own mouth. A stranger, and not thine own lips. A stone is heavy, and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than the Lord. Wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy? Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The full soul loathed and honeycomb. But to the hungry soul, every bit of thing is sweet. As a bird that wandered from her nest, so is a man that wandered from his place. Ointment and perfume rejoice the heart. So doth the sweetness of a man spring in my heart of counsel. Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of calamity. For better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, the God of our joy, the God of our salvation, the author and the finisher of our faith, the maker and the creator of the universe, the giver, the sustainer, and the protector of life. We come this morning, Father, to turn to some serious and humble thanks. Thank you, Father, first of all, for saving us. Thank you, Father, for keeping us. Thank you, Father, for your protection. We thank you, Father, for your promises. We thank you, Father, for making us a royal priesthood, sanctified, set apart to do good, to good works. We thank you for making us more than a conqueror. Thank you for giving us the spirit of love that shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the spirit of courage. You did not give us the spirit of fear. You say you gave us the spirit of courage. Then you gave us a sound mind. And then you gave us the measure of faith. And we thank you for them all. Thank you for passion that you gave us for others. Thank you for compassion you gave us for others. Thank you for the spirit of giving that you gave us, and thank you for the spirit of forgiving that you gave us. Father, we thank you for the sunshine this morning. Thank you for the rain we had this morning and had lately. Thank you for the snow and the ice. Thank you for the winter. Thank you for food that we eat and the tongue to taste our food, taste buds, that we can taste what we are eating. Thank you for the ability to digest our food. Then we thank you for our spiritual food. We thank you for the, the ability to eat our spiritual food, to eat the word, to digest the word, and then to walk it out. Father, we praise you this morning. We bless you, lift you up, magnify your holy name, glorify you, bless you. Adore you, love you, say hallelujah to you. Father, let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts, let them be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Because my 
by your disciples pray today that your word may be a healing ointment upon the people's spirit that all might be well in their soul. Thank you for the privilege of being able to preach in a place called Mount Zion. Thank you for your grace and your mercy that have kept us thus far along the way. Thank you for being such a good God. Somehow, you have moved in our lives. You stimulated us even more than the stimulus check. You are the checker of us. You have a way of moving in our lives where we can see your glory. We thank you for each and every person. We thank you for what you are doing here. We celebrate what you are about to do. We pray even now, Lord, continually that you might uh, protect your people from all hurt, harm, and danger. God, there are some who are sick and not feeling well today. Lord, give them the strength Help them to speak to themselves, heal you. God will give you the glory. We love you. We praise your name. We depend upon you. We cannot make it without you. We need thee, oh Lord. We need thee every hour. Have thine own way, oh God. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For you alone are worthy. We adore you. You're our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for each of you. Hallelujah. I see you sprinkled around the sanctuary. We appreciate you. Uh, looking forward to a full fellowship uh, with you soon. Amen. So I thank God for you. This month has been historically known as Women's Month. And I thought that I would highlight Women's Month by talking about a woman who made her way into the scene, into the storyline of Jesus Christ as he was preparing to go to Calvary's cross. And so women have been so active in the life and ministry of Christ. Matter of fact, he could not have done what he did without the care and charisma of the women who have participated in scripture. And so I say that to compliment women, not to compete against men, but to compliment women. I need to say something concerning that word I just used. I just used the word, I said compete. So often people think that I'm greater when I'm in competition with others. Truth of the matter is we are greater when we are in complement of others and not competition. We are never in fight with our women and our women are never in fighting with us. We are together. Your greatness is, does not mean that mine is diminished, but it means that yours is increased because we go up together. The late pastor of this church, the Reverend Charles J. Patterson, would say, when one of y'all look good, all of us look good. And we need to hold on to that type of philosophy even as we call through, through life. I needed to say that because a lot of times people say stuff like, she's a strong black woman. And the emphasis means that she puts down her man. But the truth of the matter is, you're strongest when you're lifting others up. I wish I had some help right now. Amen. So I wanted to say that and this is, of course, is uh, Women's Month nationally, and not necessarily here uh, at Mount Zion as a token, but nationally. And so I want to talk about a woman uh, who really went unnamed, and I'm going to help identify her. Amen. I'm going to unmask <laughs> this, this, this woman so that we can see who she is. Uh, many of you already know because she is depicted four times. She's in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I just want to kind of reiterate her today. 
Uh, the book of Mark is where I want to hang my hat on today, the 14th chapter. And I want to pick up uh, at a man's house, a guy by the name of Simon. They called him Simon the leper. And I want to go there, uh, 14th chapter, and I, wanna, I really want to read verse 1 and 2 so you can see how uh, these uh, religious folk were acting at somebody's house. And, and, and then pick up and just keep on reading. Y'all don't, don't matter. I, just, I want to talk about how these church folk were acting. And I want to read verse 1 through 9. 1 through 9 of the gospel according to Mark, chapter 14. Chapter 14, 1 through 9. Listen for the word of God. After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by crack and put him to death. How, how, how they can be slick and get Jesus and kill him is what they're saying. Verse 2, but they said, not on this feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, of spike nard, very precious, and she break the box and poured it on his head. And there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of ointment made. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always, verse 8, she hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the burial. Verily, I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Mm -hmm. Lead a woman alone. I want to talk about lead a woman alone. You find that in verse 6 where Jesus said, let her alone. Lead a woman. Lead a woman alone. It is Wednesday. It's Wednesday and the Feast of Passover celebrations are going on. People come from all over the world to celebrate this yearly festival commemorating the day the deaf angel passed over their house because of the blood of the lamb that was placed around their door the lentils and the post of the door. What a, what a celebration as they reminisce on what God has done in their life. They are now hanging out at Simon the leper's house. He lived in Bethlehem. And they are hanging out at his house. He, he's called Simon the leper. He's not really a leper, you see. He, he, he was probably was a leper and was healed because wouldn't nobody be hanging out at his house if he was a leper. According to Leviticus 15, that's against the Levitical laws. And in fact, they wouldn't hang out. But he was a leper. So he was identified from his past problems. He was a leper. Maybe Jesus healed him. Maybe in Mark 1 and 40, he was the one who ran up to Jesus and said, if thou will, thou can make me clean. Maybe this is the same guy that, that, that Jesus heals. And now, now they're at his house. They're, they're at his house and, and, 
although people may remember him from his past, it always gave him an opportunity to talk about how the Lord has delivered. Can I put a pen in there just for a moment? So often people will remember your old nicknames because they'll remember what you used to do and what you used to be. Why don't they let them call you what they used to call you? It's okay. It gives you an opportunity to talk about how the Lord has brought you out of that which you used to be to that which you are right now. It's an opportunity for you to share in celebration how God is still in the delivery business. Hey, hang it out. At Simon the leper's house. There's a lot of other folks who have been delivered out of their dilemma, who's there? Lazarus is there. Can you imagine it? They having a testimony party. And now Lazarus is telling them, man, I hear you. I know he delivered you out of leprosy, but he rose me, he took me from the dead. And they are there reminiscing and celebrating about what the Lord has done. You're talking about a testimony. Can you imagine being in that type of setting? There are others who are there. I mean, it's really a nice setting, my brothers and sisters. According to uh, John 12, those others were there sharing their dilemmas. Of course, Lazarus was there. Mary, uh, Martha, they were hanging out there. Uh, of course, Simon the leper, the uh, disciples were there. The text seems to convey that the scribes and the Pharisees were there. There, 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 there were a lot of folk there. Uh, they, they were celebrating. It, 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 it was what, what the African word means. It was a soiree. It was a soiree. A soiree uh, is an evening party. They were hanging out, cooling out, testifying about how good Jesus has been in them. Like, can you imagine it? Can you imagine it? Jesus knows this is Wednesday? The Wednesday before Marty Thursday, the, 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 the Marty Thursday before Good Friday, when he knows he's going to die. Can you imagine the scene? Can you come in the room with the rest of the folk right now and listen to their testimony? And then all of a sudden, somebody else who had been blessed ain't testifying. They want to demonstrate how God has been so good to them. They come up to Jesus and they break an alabaster box open of spike nard ointment and let it float down his head. One writer said head all the way to his toe. He is covered in this fragrance. All the rest was talking about what Jesus did for them. But she comes around and demonstrates what I'm going to do for him. I wish I had some help in that. A lot of us always talk about being blessed, but will you bless the blessor because he has been so good to you? He's sitting there, I'm sure, thinking that, yes, we are celebrating what I did the other day, but y'all, I need y'all to see what I got to do on Calvary coming up. I'm going to die. Go on and testify if you must. But I'm thinking about my march through the Villa Della Rosa and going there to die for you. And all of a sudden, a person comes and a knocks them with all. You see, my brothers and sisters, first of all, this unnamed woman who we will identify, she cared enough to express it. She cared enough to express it. Talk is cheap. Folks say they care, but they never express it. Talk about you love me, but you don't ever show any tangible way of loving me. For real, you love me on Valentine, but I ain't never getting no chocolate. <laughs> I wish I had some witnesses in here now. And you, 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 you say these different things. And I, you love me, but you ain't never hugged. Uh-uh. For real. Uh-uh. She cared enough to express it. She comes up to Jesus and anoints him with this oil. This oil was, was spike hard. Uh, uh, it, it was made from the roots and the stems of the nard bush. 
And, and when it was made, it was used to harvest from, from some sea, Mediterranean Sea, and, and, and usually shipped to India where it could be made, placed into an alabaster box, and then shipped back to wherever it was going. It was expensive. And she gave the best that she had. She didn't give Jesus no levels. She gave Jesus the first fruits of what she had. She did not, she did not come before the Lord empty-handed. <laughs> she, she, she wanted to bless the blesser. It was something all believers ought to want to do. We, we, we should not come before the Lord empty-handed and empty-hearted, but that we ought to be full of joy and praise and present unto God the best that we have. It's casuality that's going on today. It's all right in some settings, but when you come before the Lord, you ain't no need you trying to be casual. Uh-uh. He's more than just a friend. He's your Lord and Savior. I said, he's more than just a friend. I know we see what a friend we have in Jesus. That's all right. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. And I, I understand. But what I'm saying, he's more than just a friend. He's more than just a friend. And so she wanted to bless the blesser. She brought her best and gave it to the Lord of her life. It is interesting to note that when an honored guest comes into a house, uh, the homeowner would usually have people stationed where they would take the oil and dab the finger and dab the person. Just a little dab would do. That's what they would do for the honored guest. And then everybody would know who the honored guests are because usually they had oil on their head. Uh-uh. Not, not this woman. This woman wouldn't dab Jesus. <laughs> this woman, this woman broke the box. She didn't open the box. <laughs> she broke the box. She, she, in other words, she's giving it all to the Lord. She didn't want to issue it out. She didn't want to pour it out. She just broke the box. And everything that was in it, it was given to the Lord. It was poured out on his head. Again, one writer said it went all the way down to his feet. And it was there in the fragrance of the nard, the spike nard, filled the whole room. It was ministered to Jesus, on Jesus, for Jesus, not about what he had already done. It was saying, Lord, let me express myself back to you. I appreciate you. I love you. I thank you. I don't come asking for nothing. I'm coming giving you what I got. I'm giving you the best I have. The, the, the amount she gave was over 300 denarii. 300 denarii, my brothers and sisters, is a man's salary for a whole year. Can you imagine that she gave all that she had? Can I get a little close to you? Would you, would you devote your whole salary, oh God, for the year to the law? Oh my goodness. Somebody said, Pastor, you just lost your mind. I know, I know. I know. That's why, that's why, that's why the text says next that they criticized instead of complimenting her. That's my second point. They criticized instead of complimenting her. They still didn't criticize. They like, man, huh? No, no, no. Uh-uh. I ain't uh, uh You think I'm gonna get at the Mount Zion? You think. You that uh -uh, that preacher already got on a blue suit. He'll be wearing a green one next. <laughs> yeah, if you, you, you start uh, murmuring, the text says, my brothers and sisters, that that they were already messed up on the inside. And in verse four, said they had indignation within themselves. Isn't it interesting? They had indignation, but they were within themselves. I, that, that's something when you talk about in the next indignation, usually talking about sin. They look at her act as being an act of sin because she wasn't doing what they thought she should do with her stuff. 
Isn't that something? Isn't that something? I mean, I mean, was this indignation already in them? Probably so. One gospel says that it was Judas who led the whole thing. You know, Judas, the treasure, he was the instigator of the whole thing. And then others start following him because misery loves company. And so as he's murmuring even in his misery about how she had spent her money and her spite God, if you will, and anointing Jesus, the rest of Galilee said, mm, look at her too. They start murmuring and criticizing her instead of complimenting her. There's always somebody, I don't care what church you go to, remember, these church folk, these ain't outsiders. Listen, saints, there's always somebody in the group that looks for an opportunity to stir up some stuff. Always somebody who ought to stir up some stuff. I think they like being seen. I think they like being heard. And so they stir up stuff. They look at my opportunity. They say, listen how they did. That's such a waste. That's a waste. I mean, she did it for Jesus. And they said it was wasted. Will you let that soak in for a minute? They, they, they thought it would better serve giving it to the poor and, uh, instead of anointing Jesus. Why well, would folk? He don't, he don't need that. We could have took that. We could have helped a whole lot of poor folk downtown. Yeah. He, he don't, he don't, he didn't need, I don't even know why she did that like that. But what, why, why is it, my brothers and sisters, that, that, that folk want to tell you how to handle your stuff? Why, why, why they want to talk about what you do? I, I, and it bothers me that they had the nerves to say that something that was given on and put on Jesus, they called it a waste. They were more focused on the material instead of the master. They, 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 they were focusing on the word of the substance rather than the worship of the Savior. They, they wanted to criticize rather than compliment her. She was showing her appreciation to the Savior for what he had done. Many, many of the writers in the text as we seek to identify who this woman is, Many of them say that this uninvited woman could possibly have been Mary, according to Luke 7. They really didn't want to say it because it identifies the person who anoints Jesus as a sinful woman. Truth of the matter is, all of them were sinful, every one of them. And because Mary knew of her own sinfulness, maybe that's why in the text, She's not participating in the testimonial service that's maybe Simon and Lazarus is talking about because she don't want to talk about her business no more. It's been talked about enough. And since the Lord has already forgiven her, ain't no need to keep bringing it up. Her folk love to stir up other folk dust. No. No, this kind of love that she has and adoration, she finds herself situated more at Jesus' feet to learn instead of Martha's feet to serve. She finds herself, my brothers and sisters, showing love and adoration as we all to show to the Lord for being so good to us because all of us in here, all of us who are watching have sinned and in fact we need to show some love and adoration to the one who brought us from our sin to salvation. That can serve an amen. And if he has saved you from your sin, you ought to love him enough. If he's changed the way of your living, you ought to adore him. If he has delivered you from the ways of the world, you ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. When we worship the Lord with our materials, and when we have the proper manner and mannerism, He'll always come to our rescue. Listen to me, say, I don't care what's going on in your life. When you start worshiping the Lord, 
and giving of yourself, which is, the Romans passage says, is your reasonable service. When we learn to do those kinds of things, God has a way of coming to our rescue. I got some help here, yeah, I know, because he'll come and see about you. Amen. And it'll work things out for you. I'm just going to give a brief testimony. I, I, the Lord say, don't say it. I'm going to say it. Since Lazarus testified, and, amen, and, and Simon had something to say, uh, I had to have a colonoscopy. I turned 60 on my birthday. I like to have a colonoscopy every 10 years. Had one at 50, no problem. I mean, clean as Mr. Clean, amen. And I, I was thankful about that. But this time I had a polyp. This time. I had one, and, and they tested it, and it was cancerous. And I thought, I said, wow. I said, God is so good that, that he allowed me to have this colonoscopy. They snatched the polyp out that was the problem that was cancerous, and now I'm well. And I got to thinking about a friend of mine who pastored the church in North Memphis who wouldn't have a colonoscopy apparently. He died from colon cancer because the polyp moved through the walls of his colon and into the cancer went all the way through his body and he died. Grace, grace. I hear Luther Barnes whispering in my ear right now. It was God's grace. That's how I made it thus far. It's God's grace how you made it this far. So I need to get in the room with Lazarus and Simon the leper and testify and say like Barry, thank God, even with my actions, with my preaching, like my preaching and my teaching, praise you, O oh God. My brother and sister, she was there. She delivered the oil on Jesus. They criticized her instead of complimenting. We need to know how to compliment before. You know, have you ever heard somebody in church say, it don't take all that? <laughs> somebody start shouting, dancing and worshiping, yeah. and then some of the stoics say, sit back and say, yeah. it don't take all that. Yeah. Well, you a lie and the truth ain't in you. Because you don't know how and what a person has gone through. You don't know the rough road that they had to travel. You don't know. And, and, and I tell you, my brothers and sisters, whom has been forgiven much, certainly would give much. There's a shout in somebody, even right now, knowing what God has done for you. And many of us have held back even on our shout because we're worried about somebody else. Forget you. God's been good to me. And I got to tell it every once in a while. I need to shout it. Even on the mountains, I need to shout how good God has been to me. Yeah. Yeah. Finds in the text, my brothers and sisters, when you worship the Lord again with your mannerisms and with your material, the Lord will come to your rescue. And this is what he did. Look at the text. This is my last point. That Jesus re re reproves and rewards her. Jesus reproves the disciples and he rewards Mary. The text says, verse 5, I'm sorry, verse 6 through 9, I'll read it just for your hearing pleasure. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? Lord, I think I, I, I really ought to stop there because Jesus said, Let her alone. Leave her alone is what he said. They, they thought to reprove her, but Jesus turns around and reproves them. These are they who are with Christ. He turns around and says, no, 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 man, hold on. Y'all leave her alone. Don't bother her. Stop that mess. She is doing something sacred, and you are missing out on what she is doing. She is doing something that none of y'all did when I showed up. Didn't nobody wash my feet. Didn't nobody dab nothing on my head. Didn't nobody anoint me. Leave her alone. But they couldn't see past the spike. They couldn't see past it. Mary was anointing Jesus 
for his burial. Jesus knew that she could not anoint him once he's dead because he would be resurrected. So she is doing something. Jesus says she's doing it beforehand. <laughs> I wish y'all read y'all about it. Jesus said this woman is doing what a woman ought to do when somebody dies but she's doing it beforehand because maybe she didn't get an insight too that I might not be there when she get there with the spices and the alloy and all that stuff to anoint me in the grave that I'll be resurrected and she's doing it beforehand. Lord have mercy. Jesus. Jesus understand. Jesus knew again that she wouldn't be able to anoint him because he would be resurrected. And so, he knows what she's doing. She knows, she knows that he's going to die. For he had already told her. She, according to Jesus, is preparing him for the burial. Lord have mercy. Don't, 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 don't bother no more. Uh-uh, leave the woman alone. Can I just stop for a minute and pop, put this in here? For those folk who are anti-women preachers, Leave the woman alone. She is preparing you for your bill. I said, leave her alone. She's trying to share. And, and, and I think what really made these disciples and the scribes and Pharisees and others upset with her, not always what she was doing, but who it is that is doing it. They need to leave her alone because Jesus said she was somebody now. As a matter of fact, Jesus goes on in the text and he says, he says, listen, y'all. Since y'all want to act funny about it, I want to declare right now that whenever the gospel is shared, that you better call her name out because she has done a great thing and this thing should be remembered forever, should be a memorial for her. Now Jesus said, so argue with him when you hold on to your traditions instead of to the teachings of the Lord. In fact, this woman has done the best she could. Memorialize her in your preaching. Praise her in your teaching. She done the best she could do. What Jesus could have asked those who were there is what are you doing for me? This woman has done something. What, what do you do? What do you have to present to me? Do your actions represent a sacrifice or, or worship of, of who I am? Or are you always on the end trying to receive and never to give? Jesus was not uh, trying to skirt out on something that could have been snatched from the poor. Jesus was not demeaning the poor at all. He said in the text, for ye have the poor with you always, and whenever uh, you will, you may have the opportunity to do them good. But he said, but you don't have me always. What, what Jesus is saying to them is that don't ignore the poor, but right now the urgency of the moment is that you need to recognize that I'm going to Calvary's cross and I ain't going to be able to stop by here and have a, a, a supper with you anymore. I'm not going to be able to hold your hand and pray with you in the flesh anymore. I got to go to Calvary's cross. I ain't going to be able to speak and you'll be healed. I ain't going to be able to touch you and you get up from the dead. I'm going to Calvary's cross. So right now, you need to focus on me. Jesus knew that he had to go to the cross. He knew that the poor would be taken care of. And he knew that the moment to do so would come for them. But right now, you need to know that I'm going to the cross. And what this woman has done, she's done a great thing. She has anointed me 
from out there. Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's just awesome to think about how good God is. I mean, this, this woman gave him her heart. She gave him all that she had. She trusted him when he was near her because she knew that he one day might be far away. She showed appreciation. We ought to show appreciation for him while we have breath and while we have praise in us. I mean, our, the fruit of our lips ought to be to praise the Lord in everything that we do. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Wouldn't you serve one like that who has done so much for you? Wouldn't you receive someone like that that not only heals you and helps you, but now puts his spirit in you so that you'll be able to live right for his people today. I would, and I hope you would. I hope you would trust. I hope you'll stop the battle, the competition between man and woman and learn to compliment and not criticize each other. Trust Jesus and watch what he'll do. The doors of God's house is open. There might be somebody in here right now who needs to know today that the Lord is able to fix it for you. But trust him. Will you make a sacrifice? You have to choose which side you are. Will you be like Mary who anointed him? Or will you be like the scribes, the Pharisees, the disciples who criticized the whole action? You have to make that choice. I know you'll make the right choice because you know God has been so good to you. The doors of God's house are open. You may come by letter. You may come by Christian experience. You may come as a candidate for baptism. While the blood is running warm in your veins, why you have the opportunity? Because you may not have this opportunity tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to you. But right now, while the Spirit of God is speaking into your life, you can trust Him as Lord and Savior. You can lean on Him for throughout all eternity because He is the Christ, the risen one. The doors of God's house is open. By letter mean you're coming from another church and they gave you a letter stating your status. By Christian experience saying you understand the basic teachings of the scripture and that you come based upon what you already know. And then as a candidate for baptism, you're saying that because of the preaching of the gospel, I now come and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I will give the preacher my hand and give God my heart. We'll baptize you here at this church. Amen. And then we'll teach you and walk with you as we seek to be more like him. Will you come? You who are watching, you can dial us at the church area code 901 942 0879. Tell us that you decided to make Jesus Christ your choice. We will welcome you and celebrate with you and then we'll baptize you here at this house. Amen. Amen. You are certainly, you're certainly welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Really? Just like
pray that somebody over the airways, over the media, maybe have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. And leave the woman alone. Leave her alone. Stop. Amen. Grow up. Amen. And that other thing is not physically, but spiritually. Grow up in your knowledge of the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Have you missed anything? Hallelujah. Security staff and ushers, I want to meet with you all. I think we ought to meet here in the sanctuary. Amen. 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 We want to meet briefly so that we can share some protocol concerning our uh, reopening and following COVID-19 guidelines. We need to be serious. We need each person in here, all of us in here, to be serious about opening property uh, so that we won't pass this thing to anybody. Amen. We want to be serious about it. Now listen, listen, saints. It's a burden on me to carry, and all these leaders of this church, it's a burden to carry if somebody gets sick because they came to Mount Zion. We don't want that to happen. So how important it is to make sure that we follow those guidelines. Amen, 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 amen. We want to do that. And amen. And then those who are not doing it, we're going to try to help you do it. Amen. The best way that we can. Love you in the name of the Lord. Appreciate you. Don't forget those who are watching. Amen. Listen there. Listen, my brothers and sisters, there are members of the Mount Zion Church. You need to sow a seed with this church. You are a member of him. And, 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 and we haven't seen your name on an envelope. And we haven't seen you cash out anything. There are leaders. And if you're going to lead, lead. If you're not going to lead, get out of the way. Amen. Amen. Lead not only with your mouth, lead with your money. I wish I had some help now. I said, don't just lead with your mouth, lead with your money. Amen. And we got members. Amen. We got over a thousand members here at this church. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, Come on, step up. If every member of the church just gave five dollars, I said, you just gave five dollars, wouldn't it be a blessing here? But we still ride on 10% of the folk who carry 100% of the church. We need another 90% to come on on board. I hope you're watching today, and I hope your spirit is convicted, and I hope, even right now, that you will sow a seed into your church. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. And thank God for those who have already done so. Amen. We appreciate you. We love you in the name of the Lord. Our cash handle again is dollar sign M-T-Z-I-O-N Memphis. Amen. And so we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to do so. Or you can mail it to our church, Mount Zion Baptist Church, 60 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee. 38106. That's 60 South Parkway East, Memphis, Tennessee, 38106. Amen. Or you can just come by the church and drop it in the mailbox. Amen. We'll celebrate with you. But listen, every member, you ought to want to give to your church. Amen. Amen. So come on, get back on board. Uh, amen. Thank God these lights still have to go on. Staff still needs to be paid. Amen. And we celebrate what you've done thus far, but don't short it back now. Amen. Come on and be a blessing. Love you in the name of the Lord. Uh, amen. Have we missed anything? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, hang on in there. Keep on keeping on. Keep loving on folk. Desire for others the same thing you desire for yourself. And watch how the whole situation will be blessed. Calm down. Calm down. You ain't got to act up. Calm down. Let them act up and then you calm down and then they'll come to where you are. Love on each other. Don't argue, fuss, fight, cuss, and act fool. Amen. Just
just learn to love on each other. God bless you. God keep you. Until next week, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God bless you.